we criticize Israel, but oftentimes we have our own modern day idols that we build on our mm. lives. For those idols are things that we place importance on. The definition of worship is the feeling or the expression of reverence. There are so many things in our lives that we reverence, whether it be our families, our jobs, our works, hobbies that we have. We reverence these things, and we reverence them in the way that we spend time on them, we spend money on them, we spend energy doing yes. these things because they're important to us and because they make us feel good or we, uh, we appreciate them. We get something from them, and so we engage and spend all this energy in these things, not realizing that we begin to worship. And this is why Paul issued a warning to us in Romans chapter 1. I want you to read along with me. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. Romans chapter 1, verses 15 to 25. It's for this reason that Paul issues us in this, uh, this warning, this uh, declaration for us to be mindful of. Romans chapter 1, start 15 to 25. In the Apple version, Amplified Version, it reads, So for my part, I am willing and eagerly ready to preach the gospel to you, Mm -hmm. also who are in Rome yeah. for I am not ashamed of the gospel the That's good right. news of Christ right. for it is God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and a confident surrender and a firm reliance to the Jews first and also to the Greek right. for in the gospel is a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. For God's holy wrath and indignation are revealed from heaven mm -hmm. against all ungodliness yes. and unrighteousness of men, mm -hmm. who in their wickedness repress and hinder the truth and make it inoperative. For that which is known about God is evident to them mm -hmm. and made plain in their inner consciousness That's right. because God himself has shown it to them. Mm -hmm. For ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature and attributes, that is, his eternal power and divinity, have been made intelligible and clearly discernible mm -hmm. in and through the things that have been made right. his handiworks. That's right. So men are without excuse, altogether without any defense or justification. Because when they knew and recognized him as God, yeah. they did not honor and glorify him as God right. or give him thanks. But instead they became futile mm -hmm. and godless in their thinking That's right. with vain imaginations, foolish reasonings, and stupid speculations. Mm -hmm. And their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Mm -hmm. Professing to be smart, they made simpletons of themselves. Mm -hmm. And by them the glory and majesty and excellence of the immortal God were mm -hmm. exchanged for and represented by images resembling mortal man and birds and beasts and reptiles. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their own hearts to sexual impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies Stay amongst off. themselves, mm -hmm. abandoning them to the degrading power of sin. Mm -hmm. Because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie mm. and worshipped and Sorry. served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. So be it. Oh, let it be. Paul issues this warning to us because there are many who are worshiping and not even realizing what they worship. They are not worship realizing that they're being carried away by their own lusts. And they don't even worship, that they realize that they're not worshiping in spirit and in truth. For there are many in the church who say that they worship in spirit and in truth, but yet their actions deceive them. Their actions betray them. For you have to ask yourself, what is truth? What does it mean to have truth? And truth is having all knowledge of a subject in question. It means having all the information about what is happening or about the situation. That's true. That is what truth is. That is what truth is, but sometimes it's not because we don't have the information why we don't worship. 
in mm -hmm. spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. For verse 17 says, for in the gospel, for in the gospel, a righteousness with God, which God ascribes, is revealed. There is a righteousness that God ascribes, which is revealed in this gospel. That's right. So if we, we can't say that, oh, we didn't know. We can't plead ignorance because the word, word is the word. given to us. That's why the Bible says that we ought to study to show yourself approved unto God. Unto God a word right. man that needeth not be ashamed. Right. Rightly dividing the, the word of truth. This, we've been given study. the word so that we can study, so that we can understand. And when we, uh, when we don't understand, where we can ask the Lord for revelation. Right. Ask him for understanding. That's right. and, and we have no greater example but Jesus Christ himself. For he, the one who has all truth, who is truth, yes. came yes. and lived the example so that we would know the way to follow. For we can't say that we didn't know, for he gave us the instructions. You know, when you're assembling, you know, we're in the, we're in the holiday season where a lot of times parents buy these fancy toys for their kids and, you know, try to assemble. I remember once when my mom was little, it's this this little contraption that she bought, and my mom's not one for following directions very much, and she couldn't understand why the thing wouldn't work. But it's because, you know, there are extra pieces, uh, you know, hanging around the side. There are extra parts that should have been inside to help the thing work as it should, but she kind of just tossed them aside and, you know, tried to do things on her own. But you have to follow the instructions. Right. Instructions are there for a reason. They're not guidelines. guidelines. They're not guidelines. there just to kind of do if you feel like and if you don't well it's okay but they are there for a purpose yes. you know these days we have a, a gps where if you're trying to drive somewhere people have you know punch in the the address and they're able to get direct directions to where they're going well this Consider this our GPS. This is our That's GPS. God's right. plan for salvation. God has given us a plan. He's given us directives, directions that we ought to follow. And there's no other way. Men will come with all matter of philosophy, not matter of doctrine, to say, oh, we'll follow this way or go that way. But there is only one way to salvation. There's only one way to salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. And we can't say that we have no excuse because we have the word. Christ set the example. If you look at his life, his life was all about worship. Everything yeah, yeah, yeah. he did, everything he said, it was all about worship. He said that my meat is to do my father's Father, business. Yeah. He didn't come with his own agenda. He didn't no, come no. with his own desire to do what he wanted to do. No. And if you notice, when Christ walked this earth, never did he do anything to bring glory to the flesh. That's right. Never did he do anything to exalt this flesh because he knew that it was temporal. Even when men sought to crown him as king and to right. exalt him and to lift him right. up, he didn't want any glory to come to this flesh because it wasn't about the flesh. It wasn't about that this flesh was temple, that, you know, anything that uh, the flesh was just a vessel to be able to carry out the work of the spirit. Oh, right. And when that work is done, the vessel will go back to the dirt from wow. the king. Oh, this oh, flesh that we carry around is nothing more than a tool to accomplish the work that God desires for us to do. Amen. But yet, yeah, why is it then that we tend to exalt this flesh? We, we lift up this flesh and we allow it to dictate what we do oh, instead of being God. the other way around. Oh, for it ought to be this word that dictates to us what we do instead of the, our flesh dictating, saying, oh, you know, well, no, I don't really feel like worshiping. I don't really feel like doing this. You know what? I'm just going to take it easy right now because I don't feel, you know, we're so often led away by the feelings because the feelings are of the flesh, but feelings are for fools. Mm. Because if you're led away by your feelings, if you're led away, then you are distracted. You're led away and you're led away by your own lust because you're not following the word. Right. No, we can't say that we have an excuse. We cannot plead ignorance because we've been given the word and Christ came as a living yes. example for us to follow. Yes. We have no excuse to believe otherwise because it's clearly stated what will happen if we don't be obedient. Verse 18 says, For God's holy wrath and indignation are revealed from heaven against all ungodliness yes. and unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness repress and hinder the truth and make it inoperative. When we hinder the truth in our lives, we're not just putting ourselves at a disadvantage, but there are those that are watching. There are those like this woman at the well who are looking for truth, who are looking for how they ought to worship, how they ought to live. And when we obstruct truth in our own lives, we make it an operative, not just in our own lives, but in those who are searching and those who are looking. Right. We can't say that for we can't say that we have truth and walk in unrighteousness. No. Because the two don't mix. You can't say that, that you've got the truth, but yet your your lifestyle is betraying you. The two just can't cohabitate.